Now to the dangerous heat wave hitting our region right now. We have team coverage tonight. ABC 10's Roxanne Elias is talking to first responders as we track the extreme heat. But I want to start with Chief Meteorologist Monica Woods because, Monica, you're also tracking fire danger, right? Exactly, and that's going to be really the double uh, uh, danger that we're going to be dealing with over the next 24 to 48 hours. Current temperature is already into the 100s. This starts our stretch of consecutive days in the 100s, and that's straight down the valley. 68 for San Francisco, so there's still a little bit of cooling towards the coast, but all regions are going to be feeling the impacts of this extreme heat heading into the next couple of days. So our weather impact alert will start for tomorrow and continue into the 4th of July forecast. Now let me explain the couple of reasons why we are calling for that weather impact alert over the next couple of days. You mentioned that red flag warning, Chris. That's going to start off tonight, last through Tuesday and Wednesday. Temperatures near 110, very low humidity, north wind gusts up to about 30 miles per hour, and that's going to lead us into our red flag warning. Our northwest winds already starting to that shift that direction. We had those southwest winds over the weekend. Now it's northwest right up and down the valley at about 10 to 12, 12 miles per hour. But those will start to increase overnight tonight. That's where our red flag warning begins. Last through Wednesday at 5 p.m. with rapid fire growth of potential also have that excessive heat warning in place. That starts off tomorrow morning, lasts through Sunday. Now you can see it's a seriously strong high pressure ridge building over much of the West Coast, and it's going to be almost directly overhead during the middle of the week. So again, best time to be outdoors before 10 a.m. Got a lot more to un unfold here coming up. Yeah, lots to track, Monica. Thank you. Well, during this heat wave, first responders expect to have their hands full this week with people calling in with heat-related illnesses. Mm -hmm, but we're told they do have a plan in place to make sure they can respond to all those calls. ABC 10's Roxanne Elias has a closer look at how first responders are preparing. It's Monday, the start of a heat wave expected to last all throughout the week, and people are already preparing by stopping here at the Home Depot. They're purchasing air conditioners, fans, and anything to keep their home cool. It's scorching. It's horrible, and uh, we're doing our best to beat the heat. Troy Holman and his son Stephen work outside and can't avoid the heat. We caught up with them at Home Depot buying Gatorades to stay hydrated. Other customers bought air conditioners and supplies to keep them running. The biggest thing to make sure your AC is functioning and it's functioning properly. I mean, your AC can be functioning and not, and not kicking out cold air. The, the filters are just a part of that, but a clean filter is going to make your system overall run better and more efficient. Sacramento Fire Department says they expect an increase in call volume because of heat related illnesses during the heat wave. There's heat exhaustion and heat stroke and heat exhaustion is when you feel tired, maybe a headache, lightheaded and you're profusely sweating, your skin's starting to turn a little bit red if you will and then you progress into heat stroke and it's just like having a stroke. Signs can be experiencing confusion or you stop sweating. That's when you need to call for help. And if you're headed to the river, council member Eric Guerra says you must take precautions. We've already seen a number of drownings on the American River and the Sacramento River. Those waters may look calm, but underneath there's a, there's a current. And so we want to encourage people to take precaution, use life jackets, get a lunar one, but most importantly, also keep an eye on your kids to make sure that they don't uh, fall into the river without any supervision. First responders with Sacramento Fire plan to keep up with the influx of calls this week by increasing staffing. We will be trying to upstaff our equipment, meaning that we're going to be putting members um, on auxiliary pieces of equipment, mainly for grass fires. Luckily for us, we just graduated an academy with 34 recruits. These recruits just hit the ground running on Saturday, so they will be around for the 4th of July holiday to help increase our staffing. If you don't already have an air conditioner or a fan at home, today is probably the best day to come in and get one because things are only expected to get hotter. In Sacramento, Roxanne Elias, ABC 10. Good to know, Roxanne. Thank you. Now, whether you're out and about or find yourself needing somewhere to cool off or if you're one of the many whose power may get shut off, here are some cooling centers now open starting today. Now take a look. The city of Elk Grove opened the Wackbrook Community Complex as a cooling center. It's located on Bruceville Road. They plan to stay open all week from noon to 8 p.m. 
and more cooling centers are open across Sacramento County. You can see the centers located at the North A Emergency Shelter, the Outreach and Engagement Center, and the Sam and Bonnie Pinnell Center. Sacramento RT is offering free rides if you show them a flyer for the cooling centers. Just head over to our website, abc10.com, for a complete list of cooling centers across the area. And the hot weather comes during a busy travel time on the roads with the 4th of July holiday approaching. But before you hit the highway, there are a few things to keep in mind. Experts say the dangerous heat can cause battery failures, tire blowouts, and engine problems. The general manager of an automotive shop in Sacramento says it's important to make sure you have enough coolant in your car. Never ever check your coolant if you have been operating your vehicle because when you are driving your vehicle, it becomes hot and it becomes pressurized. So if you take off your radiator cap under those conditions, number one, you could get burned, and number two, you're gonna have fluid spraying out all over the place. Also, check your tire pressure and treads before you head out on the road. Make sure your routine maintenance is up to date and fluids are topped off before long trips. AAA recommends getting your battery checked twice a year. A mechanic can run the test for you and check for any other issues so that you and your family don't get stranded out there on the side of the road. And don't forget, we're also tracking increased fire danger this week, and that means possible power safety shutoffs. PG&E says they could start turning off power tomorrow in a number of counties, including Solano, Yolo, and Butte County, impacting at least 12,000 customers. The hot, dry, and windy conditions could bring down power lines and spark a fire. Residents in Calusa County could also be impacted on Wednesday. Now, with these triple-digit temperatures and the fire danger this week, you can always find the hourly and seven-day forecast on the ABC10 app, and it's free to use.